So let me start and <laughs> for this once I know what question I'll get because again I loaded the dice. Um, loaded the die. Okay. So I'm getting this frictionless block sliding towards a ramp with some mass. <laughs> so let me read a question. Um, so the figure has been drawn here for me so I won't redraw this figure. It says uh, the block of some mass slides rightward at some initial speed towards the block of another mass and the ramp is resting on a frictionless plane. That's the new part and it's a free to slide. When the block begins to slide up, the ramp begins to slide to the right, which you might intuitively guess. Um, the question is telling you that it happens. Assume that the block's initial speed is small enough that it will not slide all the way up. It will stop somewhere and then slide it up. For each of the questions below, keep an organized record and attach it at the end. Okay. It asks, what maximum height does the mass M reach before it begins to slide down the ramp? So let me just um, sketch out the scenario. We are starting out with this uh, setup where I have the ramp, which uh, I'll take time to point out that its initial speed is zero. And I have the smaller block, which is moving at some initial speed of V0. And um, they're going to undergo what I would uh, consider to be something like a collision. So as they undergo the collision, uh, what I'm looking for is, so, so I call um, any kind of interaction that's a time limited collision, because uh, that's the paradigm in which we are working for this conservation of energy and momentum problems, that as long as the interaction happens over some limited amount of time, then I can um, identify, uh, call it a collision, here it actually is, um, and uh, try to identify snapshots that will be useful for me. So one of the snapshots that I think I need to identify is the snapshot where um, exactly what they describe happens. You know, the block, small m has reached the maximum height on the ramp m, big M. So small block is here at m, and it says some height h. And this is the thing that you need to think through. So when this block has reached this height, how will this whole thing be moving? Because if you don't uh, take the time to think through that, one easy mistake that a lot of people make is to say the final speeds of these blocks are zero. And then kind of work from that and use conservation of energy, get some height. And when and if you do that, you will find that um, the answer you get is wrong because uh, you have to consider two conservation laws. So we've so far covered, yeah, this doesn't work well enough. <laughs> I'll just use the regular eraser. Um, so um, because of the chapter this is in, uh, you should be thinking of conservation laws. And so far we have covered the conservation of energy and momentum. And in any situation where these conservation laws might apply, you have to think through him. Is uh, energy going to be conserved? And two, is momentum going to be conserved? And hopefully as you read through this situation, especially with these frictionless planes, it gives you the sense that oh, momentum is going to be conserved, especially in the horizontal direction. In the vertical direction, maybe they won't be conserved checking time. Um, but in the horizontal direction, there is no horizontal net external force. So the momentum should be conserved in the horizontal direction. And energy, especially with the frictionless things, I think energy is also going to be conserved. So I um, am probably going to use energy conservation at some point. So as you, you think through this scenario that's given in part A, really the key insight that when you arrive at it, it will allow you to answer this question is this insight. That when this uh, mass M is at the highest height, it's neither sliding up nor down. So at that moment, uh, momentarily, these two things are moving at the same speed at that, that particular moment in time. So that allows you to set up momentum conservation equation in a relatively simple way. So let me set that up. I can set up 
So I'm trying to say net momentum initially. Um, this is what I'm labeling as my initial um, situation. And it really is initial. And this is what I'm going to call final for now, um, which actually won't be final by the end of the question. The, the total momentum initial is equal to the total momentum final. And your initial momentum is simple. Only the small mass m is moving. So you can say uh, small mass m times v naught plus zero for the momentum of the ramp is equal to, and this is where you can simplify how you set it up. If you can treat these uh, blocks as moving together at that moment in time, then it's uh, the one and the, just one object of mass, small m plus big m times, and you have the final speed, v final. This is the unknown that you might be trying to solve for, except for the uh, fact that the question is actually asking for the height. So if you're looking at this, you have one equation and one unknown, um, which is fine, except it's not the unknown you are trying to find. You're, you want to find the h, which is entirely different unknown that your equation doesn't relate to. So you have to think a little bit more and try to get it, okay, how am I going to relate that h into some other things that I might be able to get at? And as you continue to think that, that's... Uh, where you should realize, oh, energy. I haven't, so, so far I got the sense that energy should be conserved in this interaction, but I haven't used the conservation of energy. So I'm going to try to use conservation of energy, where I'll say, okay, my total energy initially at the same point in the snapshot is equal to my total energy finally at the same point in the snapshot. So this is the part where it's a little bit different from the typical sticking collision uh, scenarios you have solved for. In a typical sticking collision, your energy was not conserved. But here, somehow, you are going to include this gravitational potential energy and make it so that energy is conserved. So let's finish writing this out. My initial total energy will be the kinetic energy, one half mv naught squared, plus the ramp has no um, put kinetic energy. And then my I have my final kinetic energy, one half the mass of the combined thing, uh, times V final squared, plus, and I'm going to write only the potential energy difference so that I don't have to, uh, you know, get it into complicated expressions. The ramp, it doesn't move up or down, so it doesn't have any change in potential energy. This block M, it's going to be moving up a height H. So I'll say it gained gravitational potential energy of small m g H. So this is my second equation. And in introducing the second equation, I only introduced the one unknown that I'm actually trying to get to. So I have two equations, two unknowns. I should be able to solve it. Uh, let me check the time. And I think uh, in the interest of time, it's actually quicker for me to do the algebra by hand. So let me just do the algebra by hand. Um, so I'm going to eliminate my final velocity, which uh, I don't actually want, and uh, just to get everything in terms of h and or um, get everything in terms of known quantities other than h and then solve for it. So I'm going to plug in 1. Uh, so solving 1, I get V final is equal to m divided by small m plus big m times v naught. Plug that into 2, then I get um, 1 half m v naught squared is equal to 1 half sum of the masses times this thing. It's going to be squared, m squared over sum of the masses squared, v naught squared plus mgh. I see some things that cancel out. This cancels out. Um, and actually, one factor of small m cancels out out of everything. So now I can solve for h by moving this term over to the left-hand side and then dividing by g. So um, I'm going to do that in my head and then write it out with the h on the left-hand side. h is equal to um, 1 over 2g. I'm factoring out 1 half. And then I have a v naught squared minus um, this factor, the ratio of the masses, times 
times v naught squared. Oh, I could have factored out v naught squared. But, um, you know, depending on your time, you could just put in h is equal to 1 over 2 times g times v naught squared minus m over m plus m times v naught squared. Um, simplification, that's great when helps. Um, I, I mean, I would never tell you not to simplify, but um, if some things being left to simplify, that's also fine, uh, especially given that we have a time minute. I have, a, <laughs> I have a nine minutes. Okay, um, so after reaching the maximum height, block M slides down the ramp and moves to left with some speed. Okay, let me just copy this over so that I can save a little bit of time in... Um, building my argument. So we are now going past to the scenario that was sketched out before. So this is still the initial. I think I can actually do that. But the final, instead of being the scenario that we had, we are now going to be in a situation where the ramp, I think it's still going to be somehow moving to the right with some speed, let me call it V2. And the small block, it has come down, and I'm going to assume it might be traveling to the left with the speed of V1. So uh, with this scenario, let's uh, read through the rest. It's uh, asking uh, continuous move to right. Set up the equations necessary for solving these two speeds. Uh, check and explain that it is possible. Ah, okay. So I think through the conservation law strategies again. And um, as you think through it, hopefully you still have the sense that momentum is still conserved in the x direction. And there has been anything that would make energy not be conserved. So energy is going to be conserved again. So I write the actually basically the same set of equations because I'm going to write down one for conservation of momentum. That net momentum initial is equal to net momentum final, which will now refer to this uh, situation here, where two blocks have separated. And small block m is down back to the height it started out at. So we'll write an equation based on that. That'll be one equation. And we have a second equation that's going to come from energy conservation. I say total energy initially is equal to the total energy finally. So in some sense, we are doing the exact same thing in um, in um, the part A, except what has changed is the snapshot that you consider to be final. And in this particular scenario, because um, energy and momentum is conserved at every step of the way, I don't have to uh, break it up. I can just go it all the way from the beginning to the end. So let me write this down. Actually, in the interest of time, I'll just write down equations here <laughs> just directly. By conservation of momentum. So initial momentum is going to be m times v naught plus zero for momentum of the ramp is equal to, and let me put in the signs into the equation. So I'll say m times minus v1 for the speed of the uh, small mass plus um, big M for the ramp times v2. And somehow if I'm wrong about directions, then these will be negative somehow and that'll tell me something. And uh, the conservation of energy, initially I have the kinetic energy, one half times m times v naught squared plus zero is equal to, and uh, I don't have any potential energy to worry about. It's just gonna be kinetic energy again. One half times m times, and I could say minus v one squared, the minus will just cancel out, whether you put it there or not doesn't matter, plus one half times a big m times v two squared. And I would argue that um, um, I have two equations and two unknowns, which would be v1 and v2. So this is uh, solvable. That's it. Uh, actually, quite simple. <laughs> and the reason it's broken out that way is because 20 minutes are really short amount of time. And solving this can uh, take a little bit of time. So uh, let me use, I think this is the one exception where uh, Sage Math might actually do this uh, more quickly than I can. So let me use my computer algebra system that I've uh, taken a little bit of time to set up, uh, mainly to just to, uh, let it run. So I can define my variables, and we are not v1, v2, and begin, I think that's everything. And my equation one is gonna be um, one half, oh wait, m times v naught 
plus 0 is equal to m times minus v1 plus m times v2. Equation 2 is going to be um, 1 half times m times v0 squared is equal to 1 half times m minus v1 squared plus 1 half times m times v2 squared. Um, uh, let me just print my equations to make sure they are entered correctly. Ooh, what's going on? Um, yeah, they were not entered correctly. Okay, let's just try that again. Okay, good. Good equations. And I can solve for those equations. Oops. Um, equation 1, equation 2. And I'm solving for the two unknowns, V1 and V2. Let me put that into the solutions variables, um, and I'm printing it uh, after solving. Okay, I get a set of two e solutions. The first solution is what someone might call trivial solution, because um, trivial solution of v1 being minus, yeah, yeah, minus v0, because it corresponds to where nothing happened. They actually just pass through each other. It's the second solution I want, so I'm going to... Um, uh, use the CAS and I'll just say um, ha from having used the CAS this is m the solutions that uh, matches um, and I will say okay that's my answer I got three minutes okay <laughs> I can finish it um, so yeah the um, and I could have gotten to this by hand uh, it'll just have taken a little more time <laughs> using computer algebra system, I can get to this a little more quickly. I guess the one thing that I will see is that um, this V1, it could have potentially be negative. And it would be negative if a small m is actually bigger than big m. So in the case where the ramp is actually lighter than this mass, it wouldn't actually bounce back. It would uh, keep going in the same direction it was initially going. And if you've seen different elastic collision scenarios, you might have... Uh, you might have actually um, seen that um, in other scenarios. So, okay, result is to the show. Okay, Roger. Uh, if okay, so this is actually one benefit of using computer algebra system. I can actually get my solution from um, the second element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I can uh, plug in the numbers. So. It says, uh, calculate what fraction of initial kinetic energy. Initial kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv naught squared. <laughs> I'm doing this so that if I run out of time, it will at least uh, uh, collect my partial work there. So, um, so what I need is, I need an expression for kinetic energy of the mass, which is 1 half times m times v1 squared. That's my kinetic energy one. Um, and in this kinetic energy one, I can use a substitute syntax. And I can actually use it twice, but uh, let, me, um, let me actually um, do it this way. So I'm going to first uh, get this expression. Uh, solution, uh, the first element for V1, and I'm substituting M is equal, to, big M is equal to 5M. And that'll uh, by five times m, um, and that'll get me okay. That expression good. So and what I can do is I can get the expression for kinetic energy one and substitute in this expression. That'll actually calculate the kinetic energy one for me. Yeah, that uh, kinetic energy one of and uh, that. And how much time do I have? All right, one minute. I think I can actually do it here. So I'm going to get the same thing, um, but for the this time for the, um, the mass of the ramp. And I can put in uh, my kinetic energy 2, which uh, this time I won't bother defining. I'll just say that. Um, 2, substitute in. Uh, substitute in that and that will be what I put in here okay k2 of m 
And with that, I got 10 seconds left. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this is a kind of a long question, which is why um, <laughs> previously I've only been able to do it partially. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, so I will say here, um, in terms of my work, I'll say used computer algebra system. And I don't know computer algebra system is necessarily a time saver, especially with a tight time limitation like 20 minutes, unless you are already used to using it. Um, what I would uh, tell you as an advice is to focus on uh, getting the at least some partial answers, some partial um, partial response here. In fact, in D, I didn't actually fully answer it. I just gave these expressions. I actually need to wrap it up. So to finish out the um, K1 is, so taking the ratio in my head, it's uh, uh, 4 ninth of uh, initial kinetic energy of uh, M, um, yeah. And K2, it must be 5 ninth of, wait, is, would it be 5 ninth? Um, no, I've done something wrong. Um, is this 4 ninth? Let me just do this in on the side. So I have 2 ninth um, times or divided by 1 half. That's four ninth. Um, so K two should be the remainder of that, but um, I have, might have messed up. Uh, let's see. So M is that. Um, oh, I messed up here. It should have been capital M, not small M. <laughs> so let me substitute in uh, m is equal to 5 n. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you do this in a hurry. Uh, so slight correction. Um, uh, slight correction for k2. It should have been uh, k2 of m is equal to this. Uh, So, um, and to finish out that, it's a, uh, um, yeah, it's a four ninth of initial kinetic energy. And that still doesn't sound right to me. Um, in the limit where the ramp barely moves at all, the larger mass and so carrying out less kinetic energy. Um, Doesn't feel quite right, but it might be that in, it's the it might be that the limit where m is uh, five times mass it's uh, actually not quite enough. So, but to finish this up, um, so the five eighteenth divided by one half is five ninth. So at least that's uh, what one would expect, um, and the k two is five ninth of initial kinetic energy of um, M. Let me just, uh, for my own uh, satisfaction, just try out a different scenario. So the different scenario would be um, where the M is maybe not five times, the 10 times. Um, let's see how the distribution of energy changes then. If this is 10 times, then um, your speed of V1 gets closer and closer to V0. Okay, that sounds good. And um, and for the for the um, the energy of the ramp, um, let's just make sure that yeah, its speed is also uh, going towards zero. That's good. So let's uh, I can just use the expression for kinetic energy one. That's fine. Um, and it's, uh, oops, uh, 10 here. Okay, I think that's uh, starting to approach one half. And let's just uh, make sure that um, 
kinetic energy to uh, let me write this out actually um, we to squared and then um, and what I'm writing out now is this except I have to be careful to um, have that and uh, I'll just do substitute one more time uh, m is equal to 10 times n otherwise it'll just leave that in um, oh wait that's one um, so that's becoming larger. I think I made a mistake somewhere. Um, let me see. Um, K to oh uh, solution one because um, that's a V two, not V one. So, okay, okay, so this is getting smaller. So, um, you know, there's just the numerical 81 divided by 242, that's, you know, like 30. So, you know, the actual percentage of energy carried is this uh, divided by 0 0.5, uh, you know, 67%. And the energy carried away by the ramp now is uh, uh, now 33%. So the ratio has to be actually more extreme for like if this is a hundred, then it'll kind of get to what the solution was getting at that uh, almost all the energy is carried away by the by the small m and uh, almost no energy is retained by the ramp. Um, but for that to actually happen, the ramp, the mass of the ramp has to be quite a bit larger. So I just we doing the numbers here 9801 divided by uh, 240402 yeah 96% and now um, down here it's going to be um, you know 4% yeah yeah so um <laughs> so it, the it's my number sense was throwing me off only because this 5 times the mass is not quite um, in the limit where uh, it's not quite in this limit yet um, so, so let me uh, paste in my work um, so that I complete this. So I will just start from here, make sure I paste in my um, part A work. Yeah, I wonder if I should uh, take out that language um, or I, I don't know. I think the kind of students who that might confuse are the ones who are doing well anyway. So <laughs> I don't think it does any harm because um, it just uh, confuses you when you try to, you know, when you have time left at the end and you are trying to double check, is are my answers reasonable? Then uh, you might fall into the trap that I was falling myself into thinking that because um, because the amount of kinetic energy remaining in the small m is smaller, that somehow I made a mistake. But the, there isn't really a mistake. It's a more of, um, uh, it, it, we are not quite at the limit yet. And the amount of, um, amount of the, the ratio of the masses that's necessary to make that intuitive limit uh, true is uh, quite a bit large. So let me, so I should include enough of the computer algebra system work to kind of make sense of that. So I think uh, I started here. So is that right? No, I started. Um, ah, yeah, I started here. No, no, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not recognizing where I was. Um, Can I find? Yeah, that's from so. Ah, okay, okay. I think I'm here. Um, yeah, variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me paste this in. So this uh, answers, I think, a C. Um, so uh, work for C. And C is a work for D. Um, would be this kinetic energy stuff down through think here yeah 
Yeah, that's 4D. And trying to make a sense of the statement regarding limits. Um, which, you know, isn't necessary, but if you have the work, why not include it? Um, so somewhere from here. Yeah, so that's this question. It's uh, got two different scenarios. Um, in both of them, you are using conservation of energy and momentum. The first part, uh, what could be challenging thing is recognizing that what it's describing, the maximum height that the block reaches, that you get this situation that's quite similar to a sticking collision, but without, you know, uh, mechanical energy turning into something else. So, so okay, um, I think that's uh, it for this question. Let me save, work, and continue. Um, and, you know, as usual, these will grade as 0%. Um, and I don't think I have access to solution yet, but I'm pretty sure I didn't make any mistakes, <laughs> especially since I double-checked the sense uh, here. So... So yeah, that's uh, this question. Um, it, it's a pretty classic question. It's not actually all that novel. <laughs> uh.